Hello, hello, everyone. Retrocon here. Have you ever had the urge to destroy and ravage your surroundings? Ever wanted to pick up a crowbar and smash in some faces? Don't you just want to press the proverbial reset button to civilization and watch everything descend into chaos and anarchy? If you're a well-adjusted and normal individual like me, you probably have every single day. Oh wait, that's right. This is supposed to be a review for video games. From the wastelands of the far north, the Finnish studio 10 Tons LTD, LTD stands for a limited company by the way, I uh, didn't know that, have brought about a game that lets you live out your fantasies of anarchy. This Mantle, which is spelled with a Y, probably because someone can't spell, is a game about being able to fulfill your innate desire to destroy everything around you without having to worry about cops and society getting in your way with pesky things like laws or punishments. The game opens up with an automated recording sent from K23, the Crown Station. For some reason, they felt the need to put an illustration of the crown into the text itself. I mean, why? Anyways, you play from the perspective of a partially insane doomsday prepper who enjoys monologuing to himself. He descended into his bunker after the initial onset of a mysterious plague. Probably leaving behind his wife and children to fend for themselves so that his carefully rationed MREs and dried fruit would last the quarantine. You emerge some time later to find yourself the lone survivor on an island filled with the bloated and mutated citizens of the English Isle. But now they are also dead, so they're bloated, mutated, and undead citizens. Yes, that's right, another post-apocalyptic survival game. But wait, this game is different, you can break things. In fact, you can break just about everything you see, besides the terrain and a few pieces of infrastructure here and there. This sounds nice and dandy, but if you're suffering from Adderall withdrawal, like me, you will most likely be spending dozens of hours demolishing entire houses and neighborhoods. Why did I do this, you might ask? Could it be from my innate urge to destroy everything around me? Or could I just be suffering from OCD? I can't really tell. This experience was so grindy and mind-draining that I'm positive the developers didn't intend the mechanics to be used this way. Rather, I think the intention was to break a few objects while you're killing things and occasionally going around and dismantling a few specific things to level up your gear. In practice, however, my need for destruction was so great that when I decided to upgrade, I was able to do so quite a few times with the resources I had saved up. Now. Outside of using the mechanic to create shortcuts and collect resources, it doesn't really offer much more depth to gameplay until a bit later on when you're introduced to these auto-killing pieces of trash. Why they're set to attack humans and not mutants was never made clear to me. I'm just going to assume the military is ran by a bunch of inept mongrels, which explains why the island was lost. It's up to you to piece together the mysteries of the island and figure out a way to escape it. Find out how to reach the radio station located at K23 and figure out a way to get off this hellish isle. Along the way, you'll learn about an ancient people that used to inhabit this island. I think they believed in things like mana or magic, probably just hallucinations they had from an overdose on the local mushrooms. And quite frankly, even if true, I don't think mana will be able to stop an air-to-ground 114 Hellfire missile launched from an MQ-1 Predator UCAV. But uh, back to the story. Using your superior intellect, you are able to deduce that the optimal path off the island is to not only find, but also repair a space shuttle. I guess so you can leave the planet? Not only that, but the components necessary to repair the shuttle are guarded by giant mecha death machines. My guy, why don't you build a boat or repair a plane instead? It seems much more sensible. Either way, you'll be traversing an island filled with abominations that want nothing more than to extract organs from your body without your explicit consent. But hey, at least you have your happy pills, for when you want to call it quits. Visuals. The game looks good. Look at this dilapidated building with its furniture scattered everywhere and wallpaper catching mold. Makes me feel right at home, to be quite frank. There are also various ecosystems from all over the temperature spectrum. You've got your hot desert wasteland, your freezing tundra wasteland, and just a plain old regular temperate wasteland. And the neat part is, is that this does influence gameplay, since you need to carry the adequate trinkets and gear, as well as wear appropriate clothing to survive in them. As for audio, well, 
For music, if you enjoy complete and total silence outside of some select scenes, then you'll be fine here. At least you can tell it was done intentionally, since the ambient sounds are pretty damn good. The birds chirping in the trees, the wind blowing against the leaves, the grass crunching under your shoes, and the sound of your sledgehammer making contact with skulls. It all adds to the ambience. As the name of the game implies, your job is to dismantle, copyright trademark, the remnants of a once great civilization to be able to gather the supplies necessary for your survival. You start off with nothing but a simple yet reliable tool known as the crowbar. The number one tool recommended by my balaclava wearing associates worldwide. Starting off, you'll only be able to demolish basic things like chairs and shrubbery. Harvest those resources and use them to make your trusty crowbar stronger which you can then use to break more complex objects like assorted household furniture. Eventually, after you level up your beloved tool, you're discarded of course. Throw it away and replace it with something better, like an iron cast bat. Rinse and repeat. By the end, you're going to be demolishing entire buildings, armored vehicles, and turning your enemies into bloody paste. But, I do need to be frank with you here. This loop I just described is core to the game and quite frankly, it loses its appeal rather quickly. It tries to be spicy by breaking up the tools into two categories, one used for cutting and another used for smashing. But frankly, it was annoying to manage this. Yeah, it's cool to break things you couldn't before, but it quickly wears out. Especially since at some point, the upgrades become scarce. At the end, you're going to be spending an inordinate amount of time in front of objects. Watching your character build up tendonitis on his biceps as he swings his tool for hours on end to demolish furniture and harvest resources. The combat system is also lacking. It consists of whacking an opponent with your weapon and then doing a tactical roll on their retaliatory strike to dodge it. Like some kind of ninja, it gets old quick. Fortunately, the monotony is broken in a variety of ways. The first is the crafting and leveling system that allows you to build a variety of incredibly useful survival items and trinkets like a baseball card, or sweatbands, or some kind of voodoo demon charm. There are also quests to give you direction on the main story plot, there are instanced puzzles for those who like to spend their time doing boring things like thinking and figuring things out. I haven't used my brain in years and I'm doing just fine. There's also an incomplete tower defense minigame. Incomplete in the sense that it only has one kind of enemy, it's very straightforward, and by the very end of the game I was only able to place down two kinds of turrets and one kind of obstacle. There are also these timed boxes scattered throughout the world, and I absolutely hate these little turrets. You see, when I play a game, I like to avoid using guides and wikis for as long as I possibly can. So, when I first clicked on a box, it showed me some text saying I missed the window to open it by some seconds, and if you're like me, you might think, oh hey, these boxes have an arbitrary window in which they are open. So I sat and I waited to see if it would open again. And I waited. And waited. Finally, I moved on. And throughout my playthrough, I found other boxes that I also kept missing by a few minutes. As I approached the end of the game, I gave up on opening one, and searched up online what the hell is going on with these boxes, and realized that they only reset once you rest at a camp. Wow, it would have been really useful to know that bit of information. Oh, and there's also fishing and farming. Fishing is alright, but the farming is bad. The planting animation for plants is slow, and I would rather be eaten alive by mutants than plant the several gross crops necessary to acquire the ultimate weapon in the game, which are essentially a pair of over-glorified boxing gloves. Alright, so what are my conclusions on this game? While playing this game, I got to thinking. What if our alleged protagonist was actually tripping on bath salts? What if these mutants are actually worried citizens trying to detain you for your wanton destruction of property? What if you're actually going on a drug-induced rampage? If you think about it that way, it's a game telling you about the dangers of paraphernalia and the folly of man to think they can control the experiences they induce. Remember kids, drugs are bad. Alright, enough fooling around. It's time to give this game a score, an objective score, a score that will inform you, the viewer, on whether your money is worth spending on this game. Now look, this game isn't for everyone. It can get monotonous pretty quickly depending on whether you enjoyed playing with your calculator in school. I for one was able to stomach it long enough to finish the game, but perhaps you won't be able to. Now, it is worth mentioning that there are still planned updates for this game. One of them is a sort of building system, and there are other unfinished elements littered throughout the world, like a mysterious door that apparently can't be accessed at the moment. So overall, in its current state, 
I give this game a score equal to the number of amber pills it takes to be eternally happy over the number of lives a person has. Alright then, have a beautiful day everyone and remember, don't do drugs.